Good morning, church. So not too long ago, our TV died, which was frustrating because we had had it, I mean, maybe six years. And when, when Ashley and I got married, we were using a TV that was like more than 20 years old. So, I, I mean, we even, I even called a TV repairman, which even though that's an endangered species, it is still a thing. And, because I just couldn't believe that it was shot already, but it was, and we replaced it. So imagine my frustration when then just a few months later, my wife gets a hold of me and says, hey, the, uh, the TV's not working. And of course, your mind immediately goes to what went wrong with the last one. It's like, oh, great, we're having some sort of like catastrophic component failure again. And I'm like, I'm starting to grumble and I'm getting up on my soapbox about like the shoddy state of craftsmanship in the 21st century. And then I, I breathe and I ask, have you checked the batteries in the remote? That's what it was. <laughs> it, it was it, all the TV needed to function perfectly were a couple of very basic components. In this, in this series where we are, are kicking off a year of celebration for, for 50 years in ministry, we have been looking at some of the basic components that that God uses to help a church get to this place, and that, and that we have to commit to anew if, if we want God to leave a legacy through us like the one that we've inherited. We, we, want, to, we want to have an impact for the name of Jesus to where if, you know, if he hasn't come back 50 years from now, you would still find here a, a, a family, a community that is, that is worshiping God and where, where people are responding to the message of Jesus and, and one that is, that is positioned well to love the community around them. LifeWay Research uh, did a study in, and apparently in, in 2019, which was the last year they had statistics for, in 2019 in the United States, 4,500 churches closed. That's not a statistic that we or, or any church wants to be a part of. And, and I can tell you with confidence that not, not all, but, but many times whenever a, a, a church closes, it's often a church that was, that was trying to operate with, with dead batteries in the remote. And that's, that's not a perfect analogy because batteries provide power. And I want to be really clear, the power in the church comes from God's spirit. But what I'm saying is that, that sometimes when a church is, is operating without some of the fundamental components that, that Scripture talks about, it doesn't matter if they've got a really compelling mission statement. It doesn't matter if they've got a great facility. And it doesn't matter even if a lot of people are coming for a time. If we've got to be the church that Jesus calls us to be, if we want to see him have an impact in us and through us that continues beyond us. So last week, we, we, we took a look at, at spiritual growth, and we kind of looked at it from, from, a, from a wide angle view. Today, we're, we're going to zoom that in on just a couple of opportunities for spiritual growth. Namely, investing our time, energy, and resources into God's work in and around us, particularly as a part of his church. Now you, may, you may wonder, okay, well, why are we going to focus in on, on those among all of the areas of spiritual growth that we could talk about? Well, I've got a couple of reasons. The first one is that, that investing our, our time and energy, serving and, and giving among our fellow believers, it has a powerful effect on our personal spiritual health. It's like if you've ever been, if you've ever been sick or been in pain, and so you decide to go to the doctor, not because you didn't think you were going to get better, but because you knew that the doctor could prescribe you the good stuff, like they would help you get better a lot faster. <laughs> Uh, that, that is, when it, when it comes to serving and giving and your spiritual growth, when you're not doing those things, like when you start investing in that way, your spiritual health often takes leaps forward. And, and the second reason I want to want to focus in here is because these have, have an especially practical effect on the health of a church. I just, just you can pretty reliably know that whenever a church is engaged and in investing here, it's it's a healthy church. 
serving and giving. They are, they are as much like the, the, the batteries in the remote as anything else. They're pretty basic components, but whenever a church is missing them, it, it just doesn't work right. Now, if, if you are here and, and maybe you wouldn't consider yourself to be a follower of Jesus, I, 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 just, I just want you to know that, that today you're kind of invited to listen in on, on a family conversation. You know, I don't want you feeling burdened by the ideas of, of serving and giving as though those are, those are things that you need to do to somehow make God love you. God loves you right now. Right? J- Jesus, he, he, he died and he, and he rose again so that you could experience an abundant life here and, and life forever after. And we want to introduce you to Jesus. This talk about, about serving and giving, this is for those of us who have received what Jesus has done for us. And, and this, is, this is us growing to want to respond this way. Now, if, if SCC is your church home, or, or maybe if you're visiting with us but you have a, another church home, I, I, just, I, I would pray that all of us would have our hearts open to what God might say to us today. This is not going to be a guilt trip. It's just... It's just the uh, God can work really incredible ways, and I just want to invite you into, into just something that's going to make you and something that's going to make all of us better when we're all a part of it. I want to start by, by talking about where these ideas of investing our time and our energy and our resources into God's mission, into, into his church, where that comes from, because I don't want you to think that this is just something that, like, church leaders would push at you because we want, you know, our important thing to be your important thing. It, it, it's really about us going into God's word and seeing what is important to God. Uh, we'll, we'll start with, with the idea of investing our resources because uh, you don't really want to talk about money. I, I kind of want to get it out of the way. So um, this... This giving idea, it's, it's rooted in the Old Testament of the Bible in something called the tithe. So when God, was, when God was bringing his people into the land that he had promised them, he, he wanted a way where, where they would, would always remember that he was the source. That he was the provider of everything that they had. Because we, I mean, we can start living our lives way off the rails when we lose track that God is the provider of everything that we have. So he wrote into his instructions for them this command that, that they would give 10% of everything they produced back to him. And he, and he promised to bless that, that, that they would live a life more abundant in, in keeping 90% and giving him 10 than they would live if they kept 100% for themselves. And, and, and on top of this, on top of this idea of percentage giving, uh, God also just wrote into his, his law generosity. You know, he, he told his people, whenever you're, whenever you're harvesting your field, don't, don't, you know, gather up for yourself every last bit of, of grain and wheat. I want you to leave some of it there for, for the, the poor to be taken care of because they're less fortunate than you. Because that matters to God. Now, all of this, this is all the Old Testament law. And when Jesus came, and when he died, and when he, when he rose again, he fulfilled the requirements of the law for us. That's a good thing. And, and, and because of that, you know, we don't have that same obligation to bring 10% of everything we produce to a priest so that we can stay in God's good graces. But that's not the end of the story either. The, God still longs for us to remember that he is the provider and he longs for us to trust him in that. God still loves generosity, and he wants us to be generous with those around us. So if we uh, go back to where we left off in Acts chapter 2 a couple of weeks ago, in Acts 2 we saw uh, this kind of the first day of the church, this crowd of around 3,000 people, they, they responded to the message of Jesus, they, they repented, they were baptized, they became followers, and, and the church really got going in this moment. And then in verse 42, it says of these new believers, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, 
to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now, all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple, sort of in a large group worship setting. And they broke bread from house to house in, in these smaller group settings. And they, they ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So even here without the requirement of, uh, of a tithe, the believers, they had a spirit for and they understood the need for generosity. And this, this was really the start of giving together as a church. They, they gave to meet one another's needs. They gave to, to, to move the mission of God forward. We, we don't see it here, but we see in other places in the New Testament that they, they gave so that they could support people like, like missionaries and, and, and like pastors and ministers so that they could focus more of their time on, on meeting the spiritual needs of the community and sharing the message of Jesus, time that they otherwise would really need to spend on, on making a living for themselves. And so this, but it, this giving, it was, it, it was so important. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it, it, it taught that this giving was not to be, not to be done um, because they felt forced. It, it wasn't because of, of obligation that they were, they were to do this, but, but that God would love a, a cheerful giver, that, that, that it was something we would do because we have a heart for God and a heart for people. So investing our resources into God's mission that helps, that helps us keep his ownership, his provision at the forefront of our minds. Every time we give, that is an act of trust in God that he is going to keep his promises to take care of us. And practically, it, it helps fuel the activity of the church for the sake of God's mission. Everything that you see happen around here happens because of the, the, the generosity of this church family who, who give together and trust that God is going to do something more significant whenever we, we bring that um, to him together. When you give at Sarasota Christian Church, one of the places that that goes is in our partnership ministry with Bridge of Life and Care Portal. And we've been talking about Bridge of Life and the, and the 5K and the fun run going on there. We, we support Bridge of Life financially. We host events here on our campus for foster and adoptive families. That's something that, I mean, without the generosity of our people, we wouldn't have this building. We, we probably wouldn't be able to do that. With, with Care Portal... That's an avenue that, that Bridge of Life has brought in that, that allows us to help families directly so that often kids don't end up in foster care. And a, lot, a lot of these, these parents, they're, they're just struggling. They, they lost a job. They, they left an abusive situation. And now they're at risk of losing their kids because they can't afford a car seat or a bed. And so what Care Portal does is it allows us to make connections with those families right here in our zip code, in our surrounding zip code, so that we can go and love them like Jesus. We got a, uh, we got a, a letter from Care Portal just last week. And just for reference before I read some of this to you, when we first signed up to work with them, they asked if we could, could commit to meeting one need a month as a church. They said, your church's response team has served 69 local vulnerable children in the last 18 months, having an economic impact of $16,596. That's money that's going, that because we're serving those families, like, that money can go and help others. Thank you for serving the most vulnerable. You are truly changing our community. 
when we give at Sarasota Christian Church, it's helping to support Samaritan counseling services of the Gulf Coast. And not only do we have funds that go to providing counseling hours for, for, for kids walking through hard times, for others who are, who, who are um, going through stuff, we also get to provide a place where hundreds and hundreds of those counseling hours take place here right on our campus, which again, without the generosity of our people, we wouldn't be able to do that. And we, we support Jill Shaw, who is a missionary in New Zealand, to university students. She gets to interact with, with, uh, with students from, from the Middle East and from, from countries in Asia where they have never met a follower of Jesus before because their countries are so oppressive to Christianity. And we support, we support Building Hope in Ukraine which is an orphanage in a country that I think has been on a lot of our hearts because of what they've been going through the past year. We support Lake Aurora, which is a Christian camp and retreat center that's pouring into the kids and the youth right here in our state. Uh, we've got a relationship with, with worldwide Hispanic outreach in Mexico. We're actually going to be taking a mission trip to visit them in June. So I would tell you everything about what they do, but I'm going to save that so that you'll come to our interest meeting after this service in the coffee lobby. Wink. Um, I haven't even mentioned yet. I haven't even mentioned all of the ministry that, that just happens here week after week. With I mean, with our worship services that we get to have, with our with our kids and our youth ministries, with our young adults group, with our our small groups, and in so many other ways. And now, now when we give, there are some practical elements to that too. Yeah, when you give, some of that it goes to the light bill. Some of it goes to the air conditioning units. But without those things, I mean, there's no, there's no foster and adoptive parent night out. There's, there's probably not counseling hours. So even though it is practical, it's spiritual. And when you give, some of that goes um, to pay those of us who are on staff. And that's not because, you know, none of us got into ministry because we were trying to live it up large on somebody else's dime. Uh, we, we as a church family find it valuable that we would have folks who are working on the ministry so that they can help lead us in ministry every week. Now, as a church, we have taken on some financial complexities, like having a building, like having staff, so that this can be a place where people encounter Jesus in ways that they might not be able to if we didn't, ha didn't have those tools. I recognize that I kind of called myself a tool there. Um, <clears throat> I'm good with it. Now, uh, changing gears. I mean, with all of that, with all of that said about giving, the church has, has never been something that Christians could just kind of point their money at and, and just watch while a few people did ministry. It doesn't work that way. As a matter of fact, we see that um, where the church ran into that exact problem, if you flip in your Bibles over to Acts chapter 6. In Acts 6, it says, in those days, as the disciples were increasing in number, as the church was continuing to grow, there arose a complaint by the Hellenistic Jews against the Hebraic Jews that their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution. You see, in that day, uh, widows, really, uh, if they didn't have any family uh, to take care of them, they, they didn't really have a lot of options. Often they ended up destitute. But the, the church, we, we are a family. We are called to take care of one another like family. So the, the widows who were in the church, they were, they were often the recipients of the generosity that we saw in Acts chapter 2. And, and it wasn't that there was a shortage of resources, but there was a problem. The, the widows of a Jewish background, they were receiving their allotment, while the, the widows from a non-Jewish background... You know, likely they were, they were newer to the community. You know, maybe it's possible that some people still kind of viewed them as outsiders. Well, they were being missed. So the, the 12, the apostles, they summoned the whole company of the disciples. And they said, it would not be right for us to give up preaching the word of God to wait on tables. 
And this was, this was not because they were, they were somehow above, because they were somehow better than serving food. It wasn't that. It's just that everybody only has so much time. And, and the 12 apostles, they had spent the most time with Jesus, receiving his teaching so that they could share it with others. So in preaching, they could do something that not many others were capable of doing, but there were others in the church who were capable of serving widows. So they said, brothers and sisters, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and wisdom whom we can appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And then that's exactly what happened. The the church raised up seven spiritual and wise leaders to to administrate this ministry, and that way the church didn't didn't stagnate because those who who could have been teaching and leading were were, were needing to to administer in a different way. Others stepped up, and they contributed, and the church was able to continue moving forward the message of Jesus. I don't know if anybody here knows what the, the acromion is. Um, I didn't until very recently. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of the, the bone in your scapula, in your, in your shoulder blade. So uh, I found this out because a few months ago I developed what's called a shoulder impingement, which, which basically, I mean, long and the short of it, means that my, my acromion process is not working the way that it's supposed to. And because of that, it causes issue for, I mean, my whole shoulder and and my arm sometimes and occasionally just my mental stability. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostle Paul describes the church like a body. He says, a a body has all of these different parts and, and each one has a function. And some of the functions may even seem like they're more important than others. But but really, whenever whenever any one function is not fulfilling their purpose for being there, the body is not healthy. It's not functioning the way that it should. You know, if you had asked me a couple of months ago what, what to name my most important body parts, the acromion would not have been on the list. But I'll tell you, when it is not working the way that it's supposed to be, the whole body suffers. The same is true of a church. Every believer is here for a purpose. God gives us different talents, different abilities, different ministries, different activities, but we are all meant to serve God together for our common good. That means investing our time and our energy. And when we do, I mean, when we do, it's not just the whole church that benefits, but we ourselves grow to be more like Jesus. But Jesus told his followers that I, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And he called them to have an attitude like his. I mean, spiritually speaking, if you are serious, if you're serious about spiritual growth, you serve. Now, I want to I, I wanna kind of remove any illusion that anybody might have that, that this or that any other church you ever might be a part of doesn't need you to invest your time, energy, and resources. You know, real talk, most of us don't land at a church that seems like a train wreck. I mean, maybe there is a special person who, like, you'd show up to a church and and say, this is not going well. I think I'll stay. (laughs) I mean, no, most of us, we... We, we, we end up at a place, maybe you ended up here because of, uh, of something, be it relationships with people or the worship or the teaching or the, the ministry to, to kids or maybe it was just the free coffee. But you end up someplace because something seems right. And that's because there are, there are a number of people, some that you see and some that you don't, who love Jesus and who love that church, and so they serve and they give so that it never seems like a train wreck. 
or almost never. Um, but please, please don't mistake that, that, please don't mistake that for thinking that your time and energy and resources can't contribute. I mean, first and foremost, I say this, and, and I mean this with all of my heart. I am saying this for your own sake. I mean, even if, if every single budget was funded, even if we had somebody serving in every position we could think of, I would still beg you not to just be a spectator at your church, but to be an invested part of your church. Because of how Jesus is going to work in you and through you if you do. I don't want you to miss out on that. But second, and, and it's important to, just because a church seems like it's doing okay right now without your time and your energy and your resources doesn't mean that it'll always be that way. When too many folks in a church are just attending and they're not looking to be an invested part, it's only a matter of time before that church becomes a statistic. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. 2022 uh, was a little bit of rough waters for SCC financially. And I'm not telling you that because I want you to think that the sky is falling. I am not telling you that because I want you to even think that I'm worried about it because I'm not. I'm telling it to you because we, you know, we have experienced an odd season in the world. We've experienced a lot of change as a church over the last four or five years. And even though, I mean, I, I would happily introduce you to any member of our finance team. Come and ask me. I'll tell you who they are. Um, and I, I believe that they would tell you that fiscally as a church, we are very responsible and that we continue to try and push ministry forward. And that right now, giving is not always meeting costs. There's an area of that that I, I want to take a little bit of responsibility for. And that's the fact that we don't talk very much about giving in church. And, and, and here's why. Honestly, I don't like talking about money. I like telling you what God's word says about money. Because God's word is awesome when it comes to money, and it can do a lot to help us live a very healthy financial life. I don't love talking about giving at church because I know that for some people who maybe have, have not had great experiences at church, that's one of the things that can become a barrier between them and Jesus. But at the same time, I recognize that we've also been missing out on an opportunity for worship. And giving is, it's, it's not supposed to be a guilt thing for followers of Jesus. It's, it's a worship thing. And, and we haven't been taking opportunities together to stop and to remember what it is that God has provided for us. To remember how he takes care of us. And we haven't been taking time to stop together and to, and to pray that he would bless what we give. Whether we gave that online earlier in the week, whether we dropped it off in the boxes when we got here. We haven't been praying together that God would take those resources and that he would multiply them for the good of, of the people around us and the growth of his kingdom. I'm telling you that because expect to start seeing more of that. Again, not because I'm trying to say that we're in some kind of money bind. That's, that's not what you're hearing from me. It's because this investment is a part of our worship. And those of us who follow Jesus, we need to treat it that way. And I will tell you, if, if SCC is your church home and, and investing your resources is not a regular part of your worship, I would ask that you would prayerfully consider contributing. If you already give, I'm not asking anything more of you. I mean, if, if, if God puts that burden on your heart, that's between you and him. But for those of you if, you, if you call this your church, you haven't joined us in regular giving, we could use you. We believe that God is doing important work here. I believe that, that you're here because you, you, you've seen that. And, and, and we, we know that there is more to come if, if we will trust him. And if we'll share our resources together, we, we don't want him to just be helping us 
you know, meet, meet the cost. Just be able to do the bare minimum. We want to see God do so much more than we could possibly imagine. And we believe that he'll pour it out whenever we're faithful. And I know that some of you may feel like, well, I don't, I don't feel like I have enough myself to be generous with others. There's a lot to be said on this. My, my encouragement to you would be that God wouldn't call us to be generous if he didn't give us what we needed to be generous. Th this is one of those areas where, where a lot of times we have to step out in faith and obedience first and then just watch. Just, just watch how God shows off and provides. Now, as far as investing your time and your energy, there's, there, there's no shortage of ways um, where you can help. And, and we have new opportunities that seem to be popping up all the time that we're just saying, okay, God, if you're going to keep putting these in front of us, you've got to be putting people in here who can help, help us do all of these things. We just need to figure out how to engage together. So we tried to make that uh, just a little bit easier for you this morning. In the, in the seat backs in front of you, you'll, you'll find some of these. This is just a little pamphlet that we put together letting you know um, what a lot of the different kind of serving opportunities, possibilities that we have here as a church. Some of them right here serving in the church, some of them serving out in the community. We've highlighted a few of them to give you an idea of what serving in those areas might look like. For, for us, you know, some of these are, are weekly opportunities to serve. Some of them are monthly opportunities to serve. Some of them are just, hey, let us put your name on a list, and when it comes up, we'll give you a call, and we'll see if you can do it. If SCC is not your church home, we have no expectation of you here. But if this is your church, then it's time to engage. And when, we, when, when, when I keep saying, you know, year 50 for us is a year of commitment, that it's, it's a year that sets the course for the future for us. This is the kind of thing we're talking about. Any, it, so anything that you put down on this and, and, and when you drop these off at the welcome desk, you're not signing up to do it. You're saying, I'm willing to have a conversation about it. I'd like to learn a little bit more. I'd like to hear what that looks like. We're not signing you up for a never-ending responsibility. We're not signing you up to do something more than what you have time for. We're not going to throw you into something that you're not equipped to do. We want to work with you. We want to we find that good fit for you. And if, and if nothing works on there, no, nothing seems like the right thing for you, just tell us you're willing, and we will, we will we'll work together and find out what that thing might be. And if you truly physically feel like you are not capable of doing anything else well then you sign up for our prayer team you know we will <laughs> we will have we, our, our prayer ministry will be the biggest ministry in the entire church and i promise you that's a church that's moving if you can't do anything else serve our church by praying with us if you are already serving thank you from the bottom of my heart Many of you wear more than one of these hats. And I pray for you all the time that God is doing just incredible works of growth in your life because of it. If you are already giving, thank you. Your generosity is truly changing lives. If you have not yet invested, join us. Come and be a part of it. Don't just go here. Be a part of what God is doing in and around you. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for being a great God, a good God. God, I just... I want to thank you for providing what you have provided for us, Lord. Many of us, you have provided abundantly for, Lord God. And I thank you for that. And I pray that you would help us to remember all that you have provided. I pray, Lord, that for those of us who, who have given, Lord, given online, given here in service, God, I pray that you would take those offerings to you and that you would bless them that you would allow them to be used wisely, that you would multiply their impact so that it's so much more than 
the, the, what little we have given to you because you can do that, God, in your power. And we ask you to do that in your power, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would stir in our hearts. Lord, that, that because we just look at you and we just see how good you are, that you have loved us so much because of all that you gave up to, to, to be with us and to save us and to see us have eternal life, Lord. I pray that we would long to have a heart like yours. Lord, that, that we would put other things aside and that we would, Lord, that we would give that time and that energy to you, Lord, to, to seeing your ma name made great, seeing your kingdom come, Lord, so that more people might know your name, Jesus, and be saved. Jesus, we love you. We ask all of these things in your name.